guys, welcome to Wi-Fi Matters. So today I'm super excited because I'm going to be interviewing Ryan Adlifson. He's a financial advisor at Northwestern Mutual, which is a financial uh, American financial services company. I really hope you guys enjoy the interview and learn something from it. Thanks. Okay, so can you briefly explain your job as a financial advisor, um, like typical ways that you help people? Sure, it's a great question. So I think of it sometimes as like a financial coach. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my clients use us as a sounding board. You know, what should I be doing with these different areas? Um, but more often than not, clients view us as their trusted advisor. So we're helping them with uh, generally uh, many areas of their finances yeah. and planning. Mm -hmm. It all starts with getting to know the client hopefully really, really well. Yeah. And what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're saving for, what your experiences have been with money in the past, what yeah. concerns you have, what worry you have, what keeps you up at night. Mm -hmm. And really getting to know the client and truly what they're trying to accomplish yeah. and hopefully the why behind it. Mm -hmm. And from there, we'll create plans. For example, if they want to save for a new home in X amount of years, what's the home price going to be? How much mm -hmm. do you have to save? You know, if the home that you really want is more expensive, would we sacrifice saving in other areas? So oh, I, I see. really yeah. trying to help them save and plan and be prepared for anything that could come their way financially. Yeah. Uh, but really tailoring it to their needs, wants, and goals. Okay. That's great. And so I'm assuming the typical age you work with, you don't work with any teens, more like adults, and they're like mid-30s mid, mid 30s or starting out with their jobs, right? Yeah, that's typically correct, Kriti. Uh, so I'm 39. Most of our clients now, uh, the highest percentage of my clients are in their 40s and 50s. Yeah. Um, and then we do have a fair amount of clients that are in retirement and then their mm -hmm. 30s, like you just described. Yeah. So kind of middle-aged mm -hmm. is generally our clientele right now. Okay. And generally as, as you get older, as I get older, probably my clients will, will get older as well. Um, okay, but I not, see. yeah. So I do have one teenage client. Oh. It, it's the son of a client of mine who's in his 50s. Okay. And his son, he would like to take over. They have a family business. Oh, and his I son see. Yeah. is working in the business for a number of years and may eventually take over. No, oh, yeah, that's So makes sense. Yeah. he asked me to set up some stuff for his son to get started with some planning and just kind of like you've been describing in our emails, kind of learning about finances and getting more mm -hmm. prepared for eventually if he can take over the business, okay. you know, some years from now. So do one teenage client. Yes, okay. one. Would you, would you recommend that a lot of, like a lot of teenagers have some businesses, would you recommend that they also speak to financial advisors? I don't think it would ever hurt to start as yeah. soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Um, I've had a lot of clients just ask me to speak with their children just about the basics. Yeah, um, yeah. I know this is over audio, but I will show you a few pieces that, would be great to start out with just yeah, learning the basics yeah. of, you know, what percentage of my income should I save? What are the options that I have? Mm -hmm. um, how does investing work? You know, yeah. what about taxes? You know, when you're working, most people are surprised there's taxes and insurance yeah. and all the stuff that comes out of your paycheck. So just learning a lot of the basics when kids are teenagers will yeah. be really, really helpful. I think, especially yeah. moving forward later in life to have that knowledge base. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So when you work with your adult clients, do you like see a wide range of um, like a spectrum of financial literacy? Yeah, I saw that in uh, some of your questions. Uh, definitely, you know, there's definitely people who have a ton of knowledge in these areas, but maybe don't want to do it themselves or deal with it themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why will they will utilize us. Um, obviously we have a lot of knowledge, um, but even we don't know everything, right? Yeah. Um, but the, there's definitely clients that don't have a lot of knowledge. They know obviously a lot of the basics, but, um, some people definitely want to dive into it more and learn more. And mm -hmm. some really don't want to know more and just say, Hey, you take leave care it of it. To, yeah, leave it I to don't you. really care yeah. to know. So yeah, there, there's a wide range and oh. there, there's not, one's not right. One's not wrong. Oh. It's just, they're different. And 
so why do you think there is this difference? Like why? why That's a great think? question. I, I think it's probably a lot of it's probably personal. Some yeah. people probably want to learn more oh, and yeah. know more. And some don't care to. I agree with you. One of the first questions I ask in an initial meeting to anybody is tell me what you learned about money from your parents yeah, and how you see that play out today. Mm-hmm. Because so much of this, is, you know, comes from our childhood, right? Mm-hmm. Some people didn't learn a lot and they want to be different than their parents. Some mm-hmm. people learned a ton, you know, some people didn't learn much and say, Hey, I really don't know much kind of partially because of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Why is there so much difference? I think a lot of it does come back to, you know, how we were raised, what we yeah. learned, um, how much maybe education we received. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that there's much finance class. No, know, yeah, in America, yeah, in America, um, like in schools, there's only seventeen. I think seventeen states that like mandate you need to have some sort of financial like education in high school, like which yeah. is crazy. If you think about it, is the it really is? Yeah. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I, you know, that's one of the most core things that we have to do right you Mm -hmm. earn a living you save you you know want to retire most people do most people want to fund or help out with their kids education at some level yeah and the fact that we don't have the basic learnings of you know budgeting taxes all these types of things in a a high school class is definitely surprising to me i think that would be really really helpful to yeah to like you've described it, the financial literacy of, yeah. of America, especially teenagers going forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what's your opinion on teenagers and their relationship with like money, finance? Yeah, I saw that question. Yeah. I don't know if I really have an opinion. Right. I haven't thought about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I personally am, was a kid, you know, 39 now, but 25 years ago in high school, I was a kid that if I had a job, I was the saver. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wanted to save pretty much every penny and see it build and grow. And mm-hmm. I was, you know, more of that type of a person. Um, but I guess I don't really have an opinion on, you know, you know, teenagers and their, you know, financial habits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess probably like adults, there's a wide range, you know, yeah. some people probably live below their means and are savers. And there's mm-hmm. probably a lot of people that they get a dollar and it's already spent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and one thing I will show you, um, uh, Kriti, is I've got a little budget here on the screen if you want me to show that yeah, to you now. Yeah, that would be cool. All right, so hold on one second. So let me know if you can see my screen. Um, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So the, I've got two pieces that I think are super helpful, and it's mm-hmm. nothing overly complicated, just the basics of budgeting. Uh-huh. So, And kind of a rule of thumb that I often use is ideally somebody would save 20% of their income. Okay. I have some clients that save much more, some less, but um, if you want a nice general number, if you make X, try to save 20% of that. Okay. And that should be done first. So okay. save first, meaning if you make $100, you have to save 20 bucks. Uh-huh. And out of that other 80, you can you know do what you want with it. But ideally, we'd have clients saving first, and then they can save what's left over, as opposed okay. to making your paycheck, go spending and then you see what's left over. So obviously I would yeah. rather have this by design than by default. So okay. this just goes through and shows you, you know, what can be saved, just mm-hmm. the basics of, you know, if you're living on your own, what's your rent, you know, how mm-hmm. much do you spend on groceries? Mm-hmm. You know, but what about, you know, credit cards or dining out? So just really knowing the basics of what's coming in and what's going out is really helpful. And there are, a ton of clients that I have that still don't even know these things. And we have to dive into this and try and really figure out on average what's going out and what's coming in every month. So we have a plan that we can work with. Oh, I see. Um, but given that teens don't make like a lot of money, like they, they're mm-hmm. not, yeah, they don't have that much income coming in. Um, so what are uh, like other ways that teens can, um, what are other things that teens can do to become financially savvy? Yeah, and I guess um, it's a great point. Uh, I guess I would also look at the flip side, and obviously not everybody's like this, but in my situation, I was living at home with my parents, obviously, when I was in high school. Yeah. And I didn't have rent. I didn't have a mortgage. Yeah. I didn't have a home. I didn't have many expenses, and my yeah. dad gave me a little bit of an allowance. Mm-hmm. So 
I didn't go out much. I was kind of nerdy and played tennis and didn't have a ton of yeah. expenses. So I actually saved a lot because I did have a lot of expenses and my expenses actually grew mm-hmm. a lot when I eventually went to college and oh, was yeah, living definitely. on my own. Yeah. So I think there's, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I think there might also be an opportunity for some people to even save more. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless of the number, yeah, um, like the Pritchie, le- I think even that like, anybody can yeah. learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, obviously, with the internet nowadays, you can just Google anything. Yeah. You know, savings, budget, yeah. uh, investing basics, you know, anything you can find. If you really want to dive into it, you yeah. can learn so much over the internet really quickly. Yeah. Um, I personally, uh, my personal bank accounts are with Bank of America. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, you know, on, on the app, you know, if, if teenagers open up a bank account somewhere, my guess is that institution has an app. Yeah. And, you know, you can, uh, my Bank of America app shows me how much I spend per month Mm -hmm. and how much is coming in automatically with my checking accounts. So there's automatic things that are being done now through apps. Yeah, there's actually a lot of those apps for like kids and like chores. So if they get sort of money for chores, which is good. And I'll probably talk about that later in my podcast as well. Um, No, I totally agree. Like even starting out like 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 small even if you get like ten ten dollars a um, a month or whatever um putting that aside because when you're in college you're gonna need i guess like like you said you needed your those skills when you were in college Mm -hmm. so you can suddenly live yeah and that's a great point i don't really think the dollar the number matters yeah whether it's five dollars or five hundred dollars okay the principles are the same right Uh saving seeing your account balances grow, being prepared for emergencies, getting in the habit of, you know, things pop up and you need money, you know, like today with the coronavirus, yeah, you know, yeah. people are keeping more money in yeah. checking and savings. Yeah. I was going to, yeah. Because what if they got laid off? What if, you know, something yeah, happens? Yeah. What if they need more expenses? You know, all these yeah. things. I was going to ask, like, what's your, like, what are some good ways to save money given, like, the current economic situation, like, right now? Like, for high schoolers... Because, like, for me personally, I find, like, I'm going online and, like, I want to go online shopping and I want to, like, overspend online because I can't go to the stores yeah. right now. Because sure. also, we're, like, we're bored. Like, there's not much that we can do right now. Um. So, yeah, what are, like, some, I guess, yeah. Good point, yeah. Uh, so, I'm just coming up this with this off the top of my head, but here's a couple yeah. things that I'm thinking of. What if you had two separate accounts, right? Mm-hmm. So you open up uh, an account that's money that you can spend, Mm -hmm. but then you also have a separate account that that's money that you can't spend. Mm -hmm. That might be for a big purchase that you have. Um, So I don't know if there's something that you're thinking of doing in the future, whatever it might be, but those are maybe dollars that you don't spend. And that's kind of your don't touch it money for Kriti. So maybe some, I find that often um, I call it compartmentalizing, but having different accounts for different goals helps people not touch each account Mm -hmm. and not overspend. So if it's money for a trip that you might want to be taking or for a present for somebody, you know, put that in a separate account. That's really the money that you don't touch, but there's another account that you can use that you should be comfortable spending on, you know, online shopping or what have you. Oh, so compartmentalizing like everything. Okay. Um, if you could do it all over again, I think you talked about this a little in um, the beginning of the interview, but if you could go back to your 15-year-old 15 15 year self, um, what would you tell yourself with regards to finance and money after having like learned so much and eventually become a financial advisor? Yeah, I, you know, I did a lot of, I was a math major in college, mm-hmm. so I learned a lot there, um, but the most of what I've learned from all of this is stuff that I've learned after college. Mm. So I've taken, you know, you see all those letters after my name. Those are basically a bunch of courses that I've taken to learn about, you know, finances, taxes, um, investing, estate planning, insurances, you know, all the different types of financial planning that that there are out there. Mm -hmm. So um, if I were 15, I would have tried learning more about those things at that age. You know, oh, I, starting if now. I would have learned a lot of those things, mm-hmm. you know, my dad, um, my dad didn't really know a ton about uh, investing and finances. He was more of a spender. Mm-hmm. So he could have benefited from somebody like myself that maybe could have had him save more and spend less. He would have probably been much better yeah. positioned today in his 70s 
you know, had he met somebody 20, 30 years ago, that could have helped him. Yeah, um, I see. My 15 year old self, I would have just tried to learn more about these things. Obviously, I didn't know what career I was going to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but had I known I was going to get into a financial planning, or even if I didn't, you know, just learning more about finances, savings accounts, investing, mm-hmm. you know, the tax strategies, you just all of these things, if I would have known, uh, what I know now, I would have tried to learn more, learn a lot more about these things at that age. Okay. Thanks. Because everybody deals with it, no matter what career you're in. Yeah, you know, you, you've got an income, you need to save for the future. You know, everybody's dealing with the same stuff. Yeah, definitely. Like, no matter, it doesn't discriminate at all. Totally. Yeah. It's no secret that a lot of families and people around the world, especially in the U.S., feel that financial discussions and topics about finances, discussing personal finances, is a pretty taboo subject. Here are Ryan's opinions on this. I do this every day, so it doesn't scare me, obviously, but I do know and I'm I ask clients a lot, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by money Mm. and often it's a taboo topic. Um, You know, some people's parents don't want to talk to them about some do, um, but I would encourage asking family, friends, Mm -hmm. parents, uh, parents of friends, you know, about these things and what they do. Uh, They may not share all the details, but I think they'll find it flattering that you want to learn about these things. Mm -hmm. So I would just ask as many people as possible about these uh, areas, I think you can learn a ton Mm -hmm. from people even asking what they've done well and maybe what they've done poorly, things like you just asked, what what they would change. I think people would be very willing to share. Um, But yeah, it's it's a sensitive subject. So uh, I would definitely, you know, try and learn as much as you can, be as knowledgeable as you can. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just try and soak in as much as you can about all the different financial planning areas that there are because this will all come up for everybody at some point in the future. Yeah. So that's the end of the interview. Um, I'm so thankful that Ryan was able to do this. I really appreciate his time he took to answer these questions. I got something very valuable out of it and I hope you guys did too. If you want to contact Ryan and you have, if you have like any questions for him, please reach out to me at Krithi at Wi-Fi Matters.com. That's K-R-I-T-I at Wi-Fi Matters.com. And I'll send you over his contact. Um, and also, if you wanted to access the PDFs that he was showing me during the, pod, during the interview, um, you can um, find them on the episode description as an attachment and like a link. And please send me any recommendations and suggestions and questions and comments you have at my email as well. And um, please subscribe. That would be great. I can't wait to talk to you guys next time. Thanks.